What's going on guys, this is Frankie with DIY Auto-Tune and Ampify, and today we are going to go over another basic tech video. Um, we're gonna go over tooth loggers, um, basically why we need them, um, how to record them, and basically how to read them on a basic level. Um, everything I'm gonna be referencing today is off of one of our in-depth articles listed on our website, and it's called Using the Tooth Logger and Composite Logger. Let me say that again, because I stuttered. <laughs> using the tooth logger and composite logger. That is what it is listed as on our website. And um, it's a super in-depth article, uh, even going over how to diagnose any issues you might be having and what kind of uh, signals you might see just in case there's a choppy signal. Um, but it's super in-depth, so anything that you have further than what this video offers, it's going to be in this article. So just refer to that. It'll be in the link in the description below. Um, so let's get into it. So as you can see, I have our uh, our sample uh, MS3X here hooked up to uh, stem power and we are connected to Tuner Studio here on my laptop. So let's go to gauge cluster and just show you this is what you're going to see once you open up Tuner Studio. You're going to see your car is running, you're sitting in the car, you're ready to take a log and uh, this is what we're going to be doing. It's very simple. First things first, you're going to go up to the top here at this, this tab, you're going to see diagnostics and high speed loggers. Go ahead and click on that tab. Um, once you get there, you're going to see a tab over to the left called logger type and you're going to select from the drop down. Today we're doing tooth logger which is already selected, uh, but we are going to also have a video called composite logger um, later on, uh, but we're going to select tooth logger and then if you want to save this file, which you want to save the file, you're going to want to click the capture to log file box before um, you move on. Okay, so. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that that is clicked. If you do not click that, you will not have the option of saving the file once the file is done. Um, so what you wanna do now is go ahead and press start. And you will see a signal come in pretty shortly, and there it is. Um, and what you're looking at now is a basic 36-1 trigger wheel setup that we are reading off of the stem power. And uh, each bar represents a tooth um, and the time it takes to read uh, the tooth to the next tooth. So let's say we're reading rising edge um, in our ignition settings. If we're reading rising edge, it reads the edge, the first edge of one tooth to the next first edge of the next tooth, if that makes sense. So <laughs> first edge of one tooth, and then it reads the first edge of the next tooth. And it measures the time it takes in between that. The one long line, which is double the time, is the one missing tooth on the wheel. So you'll have the, the tooth before the missing tooth, it reads the first edge of that, and then it's going to read the next edge after the missing tooth and measures the time between that, which is going to be double the amount of time it normally takes on a 36 one. I will get up a, a close up to kind of try and explain that hands on with a, a tooth wheel here in just a second. Okay, brief explanation on a close-up for this uh, this tooth wheel, this trigger wheel hill that we have. This is something that we sell off the shelf here at DIY. Um, this is just a standard 36-1 um, trigger wheel. And I kind of wanted to get one so I can kind of close up, um, explain to you what we're looking at. So let's just say that the engine is spinning and we have our crank sensor here, right? Well, as these pass by, we're going to be reading the first edge of this tooth. So. Let's see if I can get this to focus. So we're gonna be reading the first edge of this tooth to the next edge, to the next tooth first edge. That's basically what we're logging on a tooth logger is the time it takes to cover that distance. Now when you see the long line, which is double the amount of time, it's because we have a missing tooth here on the wheel. And we're gonna be measuring from this edge to this edge. So if I can get close again, we're gonna be, uh, 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 uh. We're going to be measuring from this tooth here, the first edge, to the next first edge, and missing this tooth. Hence the reason why the line is double the length, because it takes double the time to get across that uh, signal here. And as you go, the crank is going to be pulsing uh, a signal to the ECU, the crank sensor is going to be pulsing a signal to the ECU, measuring that time over the whole wheel. And ideally, there's no issues. There's no crazy lines anywhere, no falling lines, no nothing of the sort. It's basically exactly what you've seen on the laptop that I was just showing you. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, let's get back to the video. And once you press stop, 
um, that, uh, that file is going to be saved here. Um, and then you can go ahead and clear the file uh, and then open up your gauge cluster again and you're back to square one. Now, a tooth logger is super important in troubleshooting any kind of um, crank signal issues you might be having, any RPM issues you might be having. Um, we're gonna do a later video on composite log where we're gonna get crank and we're gonna want to get uh, cam sensor as well. And there's also sync loss measurement for composite loggers, which is um, super key, um, a little bit more detailed than a tooth logger. Um, but we ask for these all the time. So if you're gonna reach out to our support team, uh, with any tuning related questions or any troubleshooting questions that you might have with your setup, um, we're more than likely going to ask you for a few things. Number one, I can tell you it's going to be a copy of your tune file. Um, and next is going to be any data logs that you might have. So if you run a data log, we're gonna need that. And we're also going to need some uh, tooth loggers and composite loggers just to see what we're looking at depending on the issue that you're reporting back to us. Um, so these are super key in troubleshooting um, your RPM signal. So I hope that this kind of helps basically explain how to do it um, and what you're looking at. Any errors in your signal you can find in the article that I have listed in the description below. Like I said, the article is super in depth. So if it's happened, we probably have it listed in the article. So uh, I didn't want to go over all that here because I don't want to convolute this video with too much information. So. With that being said, I'm going to end this one here. Um, I hope this helped. Uh, remember, save your files, data log as much as you can, and get as much information as you can. Um, you wanna make sure that you're following along with what's going on with your car at all times, especially if you're gonna reach out to support. We need all this information in order to help you best. So um, it's a good thing that you're trying to learn how to do this. Uh, we keep getting better uh, over time and how much we learn, so uh, just stay tuned. We're gonna come out with more tech videos soon. Uh, I hope this helped. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.